Hey, what's up, everyone? I'm here with a slightly different video than usual. Um, from the from the uh, title, you can kind of tell what it's about. Uh, lessons from Ukraine. You know, I'm not really going to talk about uh, so much of, of the details of what's happening, because if you can get all that from the newspaper, um, you know, you don't need me to tell you what's going on, you know. But I just want to kind of bring up a few things and kind of relate them to our to our personal lives a little bit. Um, you know, I, I think when Russia decided to invade Ukraine, they figured that they'd kind of just roll over them and it would be easy. And, you know, they've shown that they're really, I mean, they're tough. They're fighting back. But you know what makes me wonder? If Ukraine had nuclear weapons and, uh, you know, more formidable offensive and defensive capabilities... Would Russia have tried to invade? I'm thinking they probably wouldn't. And uh, as far as the nuclear weapons, um, Ukraine did have nuclear weapons. As a matter of fact, um, when they became independent, they actually had the uh, third most nuclear weapons in the world because they were former Soviet uh, nuclear weapons. And uh, they actually kind of gave them away in 1994. Uh, 1994, they signed a nuclear non-proliferation treaty with Russia, um, the United States, and Great Britain. And they, they uh, I'm not sure if they if they destroyed a lot of them and, and, and then handed some back to Russia, or if they were mainly all handed back to Russia, but they had some um, intercontinental ballistic missiles, they had warheads, and let's just say they had enough so that they probably would have made other countries think twice. And they just got rid of it. And uh, I guess there was some talk about uh, in the agreement that, uh, you know, the other countries would come to their defense if uh, anyone were to use nuclear weapons against them. So they were kind of being told, I guess, oh, you don't need this because we'll help you if you ever get into trouble. Uh, well, yeah, they'll get a little help, but probably not as much as you need. Uh, right now, people are kind of dragging their feet, uh, you know, getting them all the weapons they probably could stand to use. But, of course, this probably would be a moot point if they actually had those nuclear weapons. And, um, you know, you think about places like, say, North Korea, um, who, who's, you know, kind of like threatening a little bit or, you know, and it, it kind of makes you, makes you wonder if you basically trying to keep some of these other countries a little nervous kind of really is helpful to them. So uh, I think that's kind of the deal with uh, with Ukraine. Um, they probably would have been in a stronger position if they had the nuclear weapons, would even have to use them. Just the whole thing of having them would have probably stopped an invasion from happening. And uh, on the flip side, if Russia did not have any nuclear weapons, I don't think, uh, you know, countries would be afraid to help Ukraine more, say, by, you know, giving them jets they need or other weapons. So, on a station that's kind of concerned with guns, knives, prepping, how does this relate to us? Well, you know, you think about how some countries uh, kind of push their citizens around and, and uh, kind of treat them like garbage, trample all over them. And then you think in the U.S. we have Second Amendment, thankfully. And you have some politicians trying to um, pick away at it, little by little, year by year. I know where I live, um, there have been a lot of bills lately. An assault weapons uh, ban has been proposed. Uh, limits on magazines to 10 rounds has been proposed. Um, uh, uh, background checks on the ammunition. These are all trying to, the, the liberals are trying to get these passed this year. But in past years, it seems like every year something gets passed. One year was extreme risk protection orders where they could just kind of take your firearms without you having done anything. And then you have to go through a whole lot to get them back. Uh, another one was you were, not you were not allowed to carry, conceal carry on, um, on school property. So if you were going to, you know, you're a conceal carry permit owner and you were going to a school function, you can't carry and like every year they give them like a little something. And it seems like this year we've kind of like facing trouble in our own state uh, as far as like an assault weapons ban and, uh, and a mag ban. So 
not good stuff going on. But that's what they're trying to do. They're trying to gradually disarm people more and more and more. Um, you know, they're, right now they're saying, well, you can have this gun, but you can only have a 10-round magazine. You don't need 12 rounds or 15 rounds. Of course, the, the, the security protecting them has 15 or 20 rounds in their gun because they're special. They get to have that protection. You don't. Okay? This knife right here... Um, I've actually saw one place has said it had like a three inch inch uh, blade, and then when I got it, it kind of looks more like three and a quarter or so. But uh, if I were to conceal carry this, it's against the law. Three inches is fine. Three and a quarter inches is not because the government says so. My life is not as important. These knives, they're legal where I live, but you know what? Some places they're not legal because pushing a button to open up a blade, oh, that's just bad. We can't do that. So, um, kind of a reminder to take stock of, of what you have uh, to protect your freedom and, and fight for that. You know, you see good candidates, vote for them. Uh, if you can give them a few bucks towards their campaign, if they're going to fight for your, your freedoms and your rights, do that. Put a sign up. Volunteer uh, on uh, uh, for elections. I mean, we're, we're getting to the point now. We're looking at about uh, seven months away. Yeah, about seven months away from the November election. Um, don't lose sight of the people who are who are local. I mean, I know that uh, a lot of the uh, the Second Amendment advocates in my state that there are several seats where there are uh, people who put gun control and, uh, and and similar laws out every single year. And you know what? Those are the seats we need to win. We need to defeat those people and and have better candidates. Uh, you know, the other thing is is that they should always be looked at as a as an insurance policy because, you, you know, when the government... It, there was a saying, um, uh, something, when, when, when people are armed, they're... Uh, when people are armed, they're citizens, and when they're, dis, when they're disarmed, they're subjects. And I think I butchered that, but I think you kind of get the idea. It's really, it's an insurance policy um, as a way to ensure freedom. But just like an insurance policy, you have to pay for that policy every year and do a little work to keep it maintained. Same thing with this, except instead of having to, you know, pay a fee like you would with your house or your car insurance, you have to put some work into it, put some effort into it. And yeah, it might cost you a few bucks out of your pocket every now and then. But you know what? You've got to fight the people who basically um, want you disarmed, you know. Um, second thing I just want to bring up, too, is is to be prepared because... You know, some people would say to you, um, well, let me start with the Ukraine thing. They kind of knew what was coming, but they don't have the capabilities to defend themselves, really. I mean, they're doing a great job now, but if you think about it, I mean, they were handing out guns to citizens. Um, they don't really don't have enough in the way of planes. They they were asking for, for assistance with planes, assistance with uh, you know, javelin missiles and, and whatnot. Um, they had to ask for help and almost to the point of begging. And that's not a good position to be in. And, you know, a lot of times people will say, well, you don't need, why do you carry a knife? I mean, I've heard this before. Why do you carry a knife? Why do you think you need to carry a gun? But yet, if you said to these people, well, why don't we, why don't you, I'm just saying, not that I'm, I support this, but, well, why do we have to have police then? If you think nothing's going to happen, then why do you need police? Oh, you need police. Well, basically what that boils down to is they feel if there's a problem, they don't want to handle it. They're going to rely on someone else to handle their issue for them. Well, that might work out sometimes, but a lot of times it won't. Again, somebody breaks into your house at two o'clock in the morning. You know, if I'm there and my wife is there, I could tell my wife, you know, call call the police. And they might get there in four or five minutes, which would be a fantastic, um, fantastic amount of time to, to get to my house from the police station. That would, that would mean they, they really moved, um, which, I mean, was is totally possible. But a lot of stuff can happen, bad stuff in four or five minutes. So you need to be prepared yourself. Uh, you can't be expecting people going to be there to help you. You can't. Um, rely on other people for help because you know what those people may be unable to help you they might be unwilling to help you you never know you need to prepare and you know that like I said that goes for 
uh, self-defense. When you're out and about, it goes in your own house for of self-defense. And I would extend that even to, uh, you know, making sure that, uh, you know, weather goes bad, you have a generator. Uh, do you have extra gasoline in your house? Do you have uh, extra food in case there's a, a bad weather? Uh, or like right now, we have supply, ch supply uh, chain issues. And, you know, I see a lot of this when I'm looking at, at uh, the Ukraine war, like that you really have to be as independent as possible and um, looking out for your own um, your own defense and, and your, your family's defense. And, you know, just just a little something to keep in mind, because I know that the, I'm kind of singing to the choir here because I know most of the people who would watch some of the videos I put up. I know that you're people who you know, probably enjoy firearms, enjoy prepping, enjoy knives and, um, you know, taking care of yourself and, and whatnot. So I'm preaching to the choir, but I think it's an important thing. Like if you have any like doubts about how important it is, that it is really important to, to kind of be your own person and, and take care of what needs to get taken care of and to encourage other people. Uh, I, you know, I, I tell people sometimes, um, you know, for the last year or two, I said, you know what, a lot of you thought I was crazy because, you know, I would stock up on stuff. Like I, I wouldn't buy two cans of soup. I, I would buy like, you know, three or four cans of soup and I would stock up the extras. Even if I use two, I'd buy three or use three, I buy four. And I made sure that I had, had extra stuff, you know, on, uh, in reserve and whether it be paper goods or food, uh, extra water, uh, medical supplies, I'm like I have all that stuff. So when all these supply change, supply chain challenges um, hit us, I think I was probably in better shape than probably 98% of the people out there. Not to say that I'm any any expert or any whiz or or anything, but just just the fact that I try to stay ahead of stuff, you know. And, and uh, I have a feeling a lot of you will like that and. If if you're not really like that now, I think you're heading that direction. It's a, you know it's a pretty good place to head because I don't think things are going to get better. Uh, I think it's important to to be prepared um, and to be as self reliant as possible. I mean, I'm not saying if if you need help, you don't ask for help, but uh, it's good if you don't need to. It, um, you can kind of take care of your own your own situations if need be. So just a, a couple of things I was thinking about and. Uh, you know, I kind I kind of see our basically our plight to uh, to keep our constitutional rights a little bit, kind of in the in like you the way Ukraine is kind of kind of acting, like just kind of like the way they are they would rely on the world countries is the way some people would rely on government to help them, and and uh, just the way that that uh, the world governments kind of contributed to disarming them to a large extent causing their issues. I mean, it's kind of the same thing with us. Um, you know, a, a mugger's probably not going to go after you if they suspect you're armed. And I think you could probably say the same thing about uh, about a, a, an evil uh, dictator like uh, like, Val like Vladimir Putin. Um, he saw a weakened opponent and went after them. So just something to keep in mind. Uh, if you enjoy this video, I really would appreciate a like just to kind of let me know uh, what kind of things uh, you guys like and you don't like. So I appreciate it. If you are not subscribed, I would appreciate a subscription. I try to change things up on the channel every now and then do do videos that are kind of related but kind of go off in different areas. So you have a good one and I will talk to you later.